Build achievable plans with Rally's capacity planning. Reliably meeting roadmap commitments requires real data and excellent communication of expectations among teams. We do our best to anticipate risks and dependencies, yet we still create plans that we can't completely deliver. As we execute our plan, we often uncover situations we couldn't have anticipated when we made our plan. Using data and team history to predict the viability of a release plan allows us to easily see where our hard commitments and our stretch goals lie. If you're a program manager, a release train engineer, or anyone who is responsible for helping to build realistic delivery plans at scale, Rally's capacity planning can help you create realistic delivery plans for your program or your agile release train that instill confidence in your stakeholders and support from your delivery teams. Let's get started drafting a plan that takes work scope and team capacity into account. First, let's make sure you're ready. You'll need the proper access permissions. Anyone creating, viewing, or changing a draft plan needs to have a special role called a planner. Your workspace or subscription administrator can set this permission for you. A planner can publish or change anyone's draft plans in the workspaces where they have access. Once a plan has been published, anyone with view permissions for a project can see it. You can do a little preparation to make it easier to find the portfolio items you want to add to your plan. Think about the features you want to include. For example, will you be looking for a specific portfolio item state? When you think about prioritization, do you want to see the preliminary or refined estimates? Make sure you've assigned one or the other before you start to work on your capacity plan. You'll need project edit permissions to change these values for the associated portfolio items. To create a draft capacity plan, select the project in the hierarchy where you wish to create the plan, then move to the capacity planning page by selecting Portfolio Capacity Planning in your navigation. Enter a plan name and select the Add Plan button you'll see your draft plan listed on the page. Select the formatted ID of the draft plan you just created to continue working on it. First, choose the type of portfolio item you'll plan. In this case, we're planning features for our next program increment or release. Let's say we call that R2. We'll start the plan in R2 and end it in R2. Now let's choose the portfolio items that we want to consider for our plan. Select the Portfolio Items button to multi-select portfolio items you have permission to access. As you can see, there are 98 features to choose from in this example. Their ID, name, and project are showing by default. I'll add state assigned to the feature as well. Now I'll use a filter to narrow down the options and make it easy to find the features I'm looking for. Select the Show Filters button, and then the Add and Remove Filters button. Maybe I'll only choose features in the Discover state. Another way to find portfolio items to add to your plan is to use the search box. Choose the features you want, then select the Add to Plan button. Your portfolio items will show on the left side of your capacity plan along with the preliminary estimate if you've assigned one. If you've forgotten something or you want to remove a portfolio item from the plan, select the Edit Items button to return to the Portfolio Item Chooser. You'll notice that these features have different colors associated with them. At Rally, we like to assign different colors to represent work items that map up to their respective initiatives. When work items are allocated to the teams and the progress bar increases, you can see the breakdown of work by the estimated size and color that is associated with the work items. At the top of the portfolio item list is a blue bar. This is the cut line that you may drag up or down to indicate that your commitment to the plan is above the line. You may re-rank the portfolio items in your list by selecting to the left of the gear and dragging the item up or down. Select the Column Expander for more information about each portfolio item in the plan. You'll see the portfolio item parent, number of dependencies, the leaf story rollup in plan estimate points and work item counts, the group estimate rollup, 
the preliminary estimate, and the refined estimate. If you know the aggregate capacity of all your teams to execute the plan you're creating, keep that estimate in mind as you consider where to indicate which portfolio items are in the plan and which are out of scope. Make sure that the number you're considering and the values used in the preliminary estimate and refined estimates are the same type of measurement, for example, plan estimate points. Capacity planning is an opportunity to compare your possible work or your demand with your team capacities or your supply. When measuring your demand, always use the most realistic estimate available to you. This usually depends on where you are in your work estimation process. If your teams have not yet broken out and estimated the work represented by the portfolio items, then you can use the preliminary estimates, which can be as simple as a t-shirt size. As your teams get further into the grooming and estimating process, you can switch to use the refined estimates for the portfolio items in your plan. You can set refined estimates to be equal to the sum of the plan estimates for the stories and defects associated with the portfolio item. As you drag the cut line up and down, you'll see the numeric value assigned to the preliminary estimate, as well as the refined estimate value, change to reflect the sum of these values for the prioritized portfolio items above the cut line. Comparing the overall team capacity to the cut line, preliminary and refined estimates will help you decide where to draw the line. In this example, we're using refined estimates to compare against capacity. Select the double arrows to collapse the left panel of the capacity planning page to begin adding teams to your plan. Select the Select Teams button to see a list of your teams you may consider. If you've got a long list of teams, try using the search bar to find them. You can remove teams from your plan by unchecking them at the top of the list. Then select Save. Your chosen teams will appear on the right panel of your capacity plan. For each team, assign their capacity using the same type of measurement, total capacity in terms of the plan estimate or number of work items, that you've used to assign the preliminary or refined estimate for the portfolio item. Once you assign capacity for your teams, you'll notice that the expanded view of the prioritized portfolio items on the left pane reflects the total capacity for all the teams in the cut line statistics. This number will be shown in parentheses. The total of the preliminary estimate values and refined estimate values above the cut line will be shown as a percentage of the total of the team capacities for the planning period. As you move the cut line, the number within the parentheses will show how much capacity is left to implement the work below the cut line. To allocate an entire portfolio item to a team, drag the feature on the left and drop it on the team on the right who will do the work. The portfolio item will still remain on the left and the gear icon will be shaded. The portfolio item will also be reflected in the team's capacity bar using the color of the feature with a measure of the capacity remaining for the team. If you want to share or split work for a portfolio item across multiple teams, select the gear next to that portfolio item in your plan and choose Allocate. A dialog box will appear displaying the portfolio item ID, name, preliminary estimate and its associated value, and refined estimate if one has been set. You'll be prompted to enter one or more teams that will do this work for you, or if you've already allocated work for the portfolio item, the teams will show by default in the group dropdown. Choose teams from the dropdown list and assign an estimate representing the amount of work allocated to that team for the portfolio item. You may add more teams by selecting the Add a Group Plus icon or remove teams by selecting the minus icon in front of the team. When you're finished, select Apply. As we discussed, colors can be used to understand how many initiatives a team will be focusing their efforts on. When we see too many colors associated with one team, this could signal that the teams will be context switching. In this case, we might want to reallocate the work among other teams. Select the arrow next to the team to see the details of the features you have assigned to them. Be careful not to overload the team's capacity. Leave room for changes in circumstances and the new work they will find as they move into execution. Once you've assigned as much work as you can and all teams are at a reasonable capacity, check again on the left panel to see if you need to move the cut line. 
The sum of the estimates that you've added for each team in the allocation group shows in the group estimates roll-up for the portfolio item. Does this come close to the refined estimate you made for the portfolio item? There may be more than one way to execute on your work demand. If you want to model how a different scenario could look, exit from your original plan, then select the gear next to it to make a copy and try the work prioritization or team allocation a different way. It's important to get buy-in with stakeholders and delivery teams at a high level before going into your formal PI planning or big room planning. Review your draft plan together in advance so that PI planning day is a time to refine the plan with finer estimations, dependencies, and risks. Make changes and work priorities to adjust for the best plan that delivers the right value to your customers at the right time. When you collectively agree on where the cut line is, it's time to publish the plan and begin implementation. You can view a summary of the plan at any point in the process by selecting the Summary button at the top of the right panel. When the plan summary is displayed, select the print icon to send it to your printer. Since only planners can view or modify draft plans, when stakeholders and delivery teams agree that the plan is a go, it's time to publish it. At that point, stakeholders and delivery teams can view it and track progress. Select the Publish button in the right pane to publish your plan. When you do this, you'll see options to automatically update the release, plan start date, and plan end date fields for all the portfolio items at the same time based on the start release and end release you specified when you created the plan. Press Publish again if you want to automatically update these values. Alternatively, select Publish Without Updating Fields button to leave them unchanged. If you need to make modifications to your plan after you've published it, you may unpublish it and make your changes. Alternatively, you may copy it and make changes to a new draft plan. Congratulations! Now you know everything you need to create a capacity plan for your next PI planning. After you've published your plan, watch the Steer and Monitor Progress with Plan Progression video to discover how to track your plan's progress and see any work that's been added or removed from your plan as it rolls out.